Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, MQ-25 becomes first UAV to refuel another aircraft. Also, remote drone training now available at Embry-Riddle, and Eve and Helisol announce partnership. Welcome to Air News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Let's go ahead and begin this episode with our top story. For the first time in history, the Navy and Boeing have demonstrated air-to-air -air refueling using an unmanned aircraft, the Boeing-owned MQ-25T1 test asset, to refuel another aircraft. During a test flight on June 4th, MQ-25T1 successfully extended the hose and rogue from its Navy-issued aerial refueling store and safely transferred jet fuel to a U.S. Navy F-A-18 Super Hornet, demonstrating the MQ-25 Stingray's ability to carry out its primary aerial refueling mission. During the initial part of the flight, the F-A-18 test pilot flew in close formation behind MQ-25 to ensure performance and stability prior to refueling. Both aircraft were flying at operationally relevant speeds and altitudes with the evaluation safely completed. The MQ-25 drogue was extended and the FA-18 moved into a plug with the unmanned aircraft and received the scheduled fuel offload. The milestone comes after 25 T-1 flights, testing both aircraft and ASR aerodynamics across the flight envelope, as well as extensive simulations of aerial refueling using MQ-25 digital models. The MQ-25 T-1 will continue flight testing prior to being shipped to Norfolk, Virginia for deck handling trials aboard the U.S. Navy carrier later this year. More news after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're going to hear more about it. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Canada's air navigation service provider, Nav Canada, has launched Nav Drone, designed to help drone pilots and operators safely and legally fly their remotely piloted aircraft systems in Canada. Nav Drone is now available on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. A web version of Nav Drone is also available on Nav Canada's website. From June to December 2020, Nav Canada received nearly 16,000 RPAS flight authorization requests, a 54% increase over the same period in 2019. Kitty Hawk has been renamed to Aloft Technologies, Inc. Aloft represents the core company's mission of powering and enabling safe and compliant drone flights through a combination of enterprise UTM applications, security and compliance solutions, and AI. Five spacecraft are now docked at the space station, including the SpaceX Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon vehicles. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus 15 resupply ship, all three from the United States, and Russia's Progress 77 resupply ship and Soyuz MS-18 cruise ship. While the ISS was traveling more than 250 miles over the South Pacific Ocean, a SpaceX Dragon cargo spacecraft autonomously docked to the space-facing side of the orbiting laboratory's Harmony module at 5.09 a.m. on Saturday, June 5th. 
international rotorcraft safety organizations, regional safety teams, and other global safety stakeholders are pleased to announce the establishment of the Vertical Aviation Safety Team in cooperation and collaboration with the worldwide vertical flight community. VAST aims to achieve a vision of zero fatal accidents, providing safety above all. In pursuit of that vision, VAST will use data-informed, consensus-based approach to better harmonize, coordinate, and implement global safety information, resources, and programs, and to support regional safety efforts. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's worldwide campus recently received a first-of-its-kind waiver from the FAA that will allow students to remotely pilot UAS through online video platforms like Zoom. This is a big deal, said Dr. David Thirtyacre, College of Aeronautics Assistant Professor and Department of Flight Chair. We've worked closely with the FAA on this project for two years and now have the ability to let students fly complex drones that are not at their location from anywhere in the United States. This opens up all sorts of training and opportunities for our students, allowing what is known as remote split operations. The waiver gives Embry-Riddle students a jump on a valuable technology and is the first of its type to be graded to a civilian organization. Dr. Joseph Soretta, Associate Professor of Aeronautical Science who submitted the waiver request to the FAA, said RSO is especially important for worldwide campus students who may not be able to fly drones where they live. It will also allow students to fly sophisticated aircraft with complex equipment, such as multispectral sensors and thermal cameras, to which they might not otherwise have access. Currently, the worldwide campus is the only Embry-Riddle's three campuses that has been granted this permission. Our last top story of this episode coming up after these messages. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Errol Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. EVE Urban Air Mobility and Helisum Aviation have embarked upon a partnership that will focus on creating an ecosystem-wide approach to prepare for UAM operations in Brazil. In addition to collaborating on a suite of products and services, the partnership includes an order of up to 50 EV tolls, with deliveries expected to start in 2026. Over the last few years, EVE and Helisum have been collaborating to evaluate how to create solutions for urban air mobility leveraging Brazil's existing air taxi infrastructure for the use of EVE's electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Helisol and EVE plan to begin their partnership working together in a proof-of-concept operation, using helicopters in order to validate parameters that will apply to the future of EVTOL operations. This partnership aims to develop new services and procedures that, together with communities and other industry stakeholders, can create a safe and scalable operating environment for EVTOL operations to expand, focusing on critical aspects to design for all users, including how to maximize accessibility and inclusiveness in vertiports and EVTOL boarding operations. 
Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Cape. Make sure to follow our YouTube channel and you can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV too. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.